What's up guys, I'm Rangers Gamer, welcome back to another video. Today, we're on some creepy videos, so yeah, if you guys do enjoy these type of videos, like I said, hit that like button down below so I know, and well, let's get right into this. Alright. Uh, okay. It's chopping food. Completely normal. Let me turn this audio up for you guys. This is probably good, I think. I don't know. You guys hear that? Alright, I think I can hear that. Wait, I can move this out the way. Oops, my bad. Forgot to move that the way. Alright, there's a girl playing jump rope. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, no. It's chopping food again. This is getting weird. Let me guess. She hears the ice cream in. She's not happy about it. She's concerned, it looks like. I don't know. Yeah, this does not look right. Yeah, the ice cream man's a little insane. He's looks like he is. Girl, run. Yes, you're smart. Thank you. Or is she gonna go get money? That's what it is, probably. Yeah, I don't like where this is going, though. Don't do it, Mom. She did not need the money for ice cream. That ice cream man's crazy. Don't listen to her. Just chop your food. Keep on chopping. Don't ignore her, please. Oh no, she's gonna get rid of money. Is she? Okay. Where is this going? She's looking down. What's she? Oh, I thought she was gonna. What's she doing? What's she doing? This is making me worried. Oh no. Where is this going? She gonna chop off her finger? No. Oh, she's not doing that. No. Oh, she's done before. Her finger's missing. Her finger's missing. Her middle finger's missing. Don't do it. Oh, don't do it. Okay, they're not gonna show it, right? They don't. They probably will. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, they're doing it. Oh, uh, no. Oh, she's chopping her finger off. No. I probably can't. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh, no. No, that's not right. I probably have to censor that. I have to censor that, probably. The dad doesn't even care. <laughs> He's like, eh, whatever. She lost a finger, who cares? She doesn't even care. Wait. Is that what the ice cream guy takes as body parts? That's, yeah. That's a weird ice cream man right there. If you, if you don't take money, but you take body parts, that's a little strange, if you ask me. Oh. Yeah, here, take the finger. Ice cream is probably disgusting. Oh yeah, that guy is weird. He looks like a goblin. A white goblin. <laughs> oh, you're... oh, he's got a whole collection of them. Oh, that is so weird. Oh, he's got... Why do you have a collection of fingers? Run. Run for your life. Get out of there. Go, 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 go. Go. Is the little girl safe now? They're not kidnapping her or nothing? So yeah, that's all it took was a mom's finger.
Yeah, this is very, very strange. Oh no. Oh no, she wants ice cream. Oh, she wants ice cream too. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was. That was strange. I. Why, why would you chop off a finger for a little thing of ice cream? That's not worth it. Alright, this one is called Disturbing True Dark Web Horror Story. It's, an, it's an animated one too, by the way. Alright, so let's get into this video. Alright, here we go. I was a regular on the chat rooms on the deep web back when I was a sophomore in high school. Literally every day for about five months straight. Before school, after school, after basketball practice, and before bed. I was always on there. Why? I'd chat with this one guy all the time because they seemed really cool. Yeah. He'd always link me to funny videos. In about a month three, it all changed. He would send links to weird rooms, then the dark live streams. So one day I was on a stream, and there was a lady chained to a bed and gagged. Oh no. Then I clicked off of the stream. Yeah. And Smart. I tried to click something else, then the mouse quit moving. Oh no. It started to move by itself. Yep, he's got and control of it. Back on the string, the lady chained down. Don't. When it opened back up, the lady was still there. And a man with a potato sack on his head. Oh no. The, screen. the potato sack only had one eye cut out, and that's all. This there is bad. There was a table that had a hacksaw, gun, and scissors with a shaving razor. Oh boy. The man spoke into the camera and said, pick one. Everyone picked the scissors and the razor. No. He then shaved her head. Oh, no. After that, he said, pick another one. And everyone picked a gun. He picked it up, held it to her head. No. While the woman was screaming. And then I gained control of the mouse and Yay. clicked off of it. Smart. I was thinking to myself, what am I watching? Then my it's, mouse clicked on another hey. stream. It was it's probably his friend that's the killer. Huh. I bet that's what it is. It was the same man with a barrel with what looked like boiling water in it. Oh no. I tried gaining control of the mouse, but I couldn't. Then I heard a different woman crying in the background. Oh no. The camera then zoomed out, and on the screen I saw the barrel, a bat, and a flamethrower. Then the masked man asked. Hold on, guys, one second. I'll be back one second. Alright, I'm back now. The chat was split between the boiling water and the flamethrower. The man then said, I'll use both then. Oh, he what? He rolled the crying woman into the side of the camera, turned the flamethrower on, and aimed it at the barrel. At this point, he had her chained to the wheelchair. The water in the tub was boiling out of control. She started kicking and screaming even more. The man called another guy in the room. They unchained her, picked her up, and threw her toward the barrel. The screen then went black, but I could clearly hear oh, no. the woman screaming and splashing. For about two minutes, that's all I heard. Then it stopped. Oh no. The screen then came back and it was focused on the barrel. The two men just stood there, staring at the camera, no. breathing heavily. No. And that woman. I don't know how to explain it, but it was a terrible sight. Then the stream ended. Look. I closed out of everything. Yeah, smart. And I sat there in silence for a while. Honestly, that wasn't my last time on the dark web because. Oh, I thought. Oh, I honestly I, enjoyed it. How do you enjoy someone getting killed? At first, I thought the door was opening. I was gonna be one of the guys, and he's dead. <laughs> I thought that's what it was. There are a lot of people out there like me, more than you think. Be careful about going on the deep or the dark web. Wait. So he enjoyed seeing people get killed? That that took a weird turn. I thought he'd be like a good guy and turn everything off and never go back on it again. But nope, he's like, I want to see people die. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's strange. All right, here's another horror story short. Um, it's an animated one, obviously. Again. It says true hide and seek, true scary hide and seek in the cornfield story. That's a weird title, but yeah, let's get right into this. All right, here we go. My name is Kai. When I was 17, me and my friends were hanging out one night and decided to watch a movie. 
making some popcorn. The movie was a hilarious thing. We had a good time laughing and eating popcorn and other snacks. But when the movie was done, it was around 11.30 p.m. It already turned to pitch black outside. One of my friends, we'll call him Spencer, suggested that it would be a good idea to play a game of Spotlight. Spotlight is basically hide and seek, but in the dark, and the seeker has a flashlight. Uh -huh. Where I live, my house is in a cul-de-sac, and if you walk down a little path in the backyard, you end up at a long street. Across that street, there's a giant field that used to have a basketball court and a playground. Now it's, it's a cornfield, huh? Since I was eight. So now the giant field was just empty. Oh. But there were a lot of bushes and hiding spots, and even a little cornfield, which made it perfect yep. for a game like Spotlight. So we grabbed a few flashlights and headed to the field. Yeah, they're going to die. <laughs> After playing a giant game of rock, paper, scissors, it was decided that another friend, we'll call him Brayden, was going to be the seeker. So me and Spencer went to hide together in the cornfield, since it would be hard to find someone in there. While I believe four other friends, John, Ethan, Liam, and my brother Cameron, went to hide all separately in different places in the field. For some information that'll be needed later on in the story, Spencer was 17, John and Ethan were 16, Brayden and Cameron and Liam were 14. Oh, dang. Once me and Spencer got comfortable in so they're young, then. we started just to talk about random stuff and about the movie we watched earlier. Just as I told Spencer a joke and he started laughing, I put my finger to my lips and told him to shut up because I could hear someone rummaging through the corn. It's and not, stomping on leaves. It's not the seeker, we it's someone else. Sat there thinking <laughs> it was Brayden and hoping that he would find us. I then realized that it sounded like multiple people. Then Spencer said, Wait, isn't Brayden the only seeker? My heart dropped. Uh oh. I began getting scared, but tried not to say anything. I could also see that Spencer was scared too. And I bet he was about to shit his pants. Oh. Just then, we heard the men speaking to each other, and they didn't sound like any of our friends. So, it was confirmed that there were two other men in the cornfields with us. Oh, no. They were talking very quietly, but I could hear some words. Boys, snatch, just like that. I felt like time stopped. Uh-oh. <laughs> About a minute later, we heard them walk off, and I'm going to assume that they left the cornfield. But after the two men left, we heard someone yelling, Get the f*** away from me! Help! Uh-oh. It sounded like Cameron. Me and Spencer immediately rushed out of the cornfields and went to find Cameron. Just then, everyone else oh, came no. out of their hiding spots and went after the two men. Spencer and John were the tallest and most muscular, so they went in and beat the shit out of them. John put one in a headlock and threw him to the ground. Then, one man sprang at Spencer suddenly. Spencer screamed and took out his large pocket knife he always has with him and then stabbed him three times. What? As they proceeded to beat them, I went to Cameron, helped him to get up, and yelled for everyone to run. Spencer listened and shoved the guy to the ground, but John didn't listen and continued beating the man. <laughs> After Spencer pulled John off the man, they both finally ran away. We went back to Spencer's house oh, since no. it was the closest, and we told everything to his mom, and then she called the police. When the police arrived, we led them down to the field, but of course, the men were gone. However, there was still some blood left on the path where Spencer stabbed one of the men, so the police took a sample of it. Oh, man. Once me and Cameron got home, he told me that the man Spencer attacked had a knife, but the other had nothing. I was feeling a little uncomfortable about what we'd done for our self-protection at the cornfield, but then I realized that was a good thing Spencer attacked the man with the knife because if John tried to attack that man, he could have been stabbed to death as he had no weapon. I'm just thankful none of my friends were hurt that evening. It could have ended much worse. Oh. Well, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> but yeah, this time today's video. If you guys do enjoy these type of videos, like I said, hit that like button down below. And well, I'll see you guys in the next video.